Это Ringing Rocks. Звенящие камни. И американцы сюда приезжают постукать их молоточком. Якобы разные камешки издают разную тональность, но это естественно, потому что они разного размера. Вообще-то это обычный курум. Каменные росы. ועדיי סיפור דורייתה לבושה דורייתה. יהיו מאן דחשיב דאו לבושה היו אורייתה ממש, ולה מילה אחרה טיפה חורכה, ולה יאב לחולקה בעלמא דעתה. בגין כך אמר דוד גל עיניי והביט הנפלאות מתורתך. מה דתחות לבושה דאורייתה? 62. בעלותך. Therefore, the story of the Torah is the mantle of the Torah. He who thinks that this mantle is the actual essence of the Torah, and that nothing else is in there, let him breathe his last and let him have no portion in the world to come. Therefore, David said, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your Torah. That is, look what lies under that garment of the Torah. Thank you. So in this section, whoever look at the Torah just externally and believe that the stories and the precepts and the literal that written in the Torah, that's it. There's no deeper secrets. What does the Zohar tell us about it? Tipach Rucho. Tipach Rucho means what? Letting bread is last, means he should die. It's very extreme, okay? And doesn't have a portion in the world to come. The Zohar tell us the Torah has body and soul. The body is the external, the stories, the laws, the do and do not do. Stories of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. But the Torah has a soul as well. The soul refers to the secrets. The soul refers to the inner. The soul refers to the true meaning. The same thing we know the relationship between the, the Torah and the Zohar. The Torah has within it all the parts, the body and the soul, but the Torah appeared with its clothing through the stories that we read. The Zohar refers to the soul of the Torah. And it says in the time to come, in the time of Mashiach, people will be able to connect to the soul of the soul of the Torah. In life, everything has a light and the shell outside. Everything. We as human beings have the light of the Creator, which is 100% of the light of the Creator. And there's the shell. The shell is the body. The shell is the feeling. The shell is the ups and downs. Does the light has ups and downs? No, the light is the tree of life. The light is a constant force of positivity. The shell appears good. One day it's good, one day it's bad. That's the shell. That's the external. But it's not just the body, it's everything in our life. An experience that we're going through, a business challenge that we're going through, as the shell and the secret. The shell is sometimes good, sometimes bad. The inner, it's only good. It's only the light of the creator. Always. It's the body and it's the soul. If you look at 10 difficult events that happened to you in the last year, when you look at them at a fragmented way, only because you look at the shell, the external, there's issues, family issues, health issues, business issues, money loss issues, internal conflicts. You see fragmented, unrelated situations which you don't know why they are in your life. The reason they are like this is because I'm connecting to the shell. I'm connecting to the body. I'm judging, as the Zohar tells us, based on the clothing, based on how things appear. Imagine we will have the, the strength and the ability to remove the shell and to access the inner energy that's running and behind all those 10 incidents that, that happened in my life. What is actually the inner message of each one of them? 
within each one of those 10 incidences. What is actually the internal energy there? The true secret. Only good, only to help me to grow, and it's nothing is better, it's impossible. The only reason certain things appearing good and bad is because I'm connecting to the shell. I'm judging based on the external. I'm not seeing the internal. The internal is the force of the creator. The internal is the force of good. The internal is the intention of creation. What is the intention of creation? What was the creator created the universe? To share. So that intention exists in every situation, in every moment, in every pain, in every challenge, in every paradox. The reason I don't connect the dots between things that happen to me is because the dots are connecting only in a soul level. It's all connected. It's all simple. It's all giving. It's all sharing. When I'm connecting to the shell, I don't see the connection. I don't see how certain things help me. Actually, from certain situations and experiences, it's causing scars in my life and fears that I'm carrying with me throughout my life. That's because I'm connecting to the shell and not to the internal. Breaking the out of shell to connect to the inner life. Concept of Be'alotcha. Be'alotcha refer to Aaron that got the job not just to light the candles or the candelabra, is to elevate, which in this word and in this connection is the secret of the spiritual world. There are two realms. The 1% realm and the 99% realm. The 1% realm feels for us much more than 1% comparing to the 99%. If the 99% is the spiritual realm, realm of angels, realm of metaphysical levels. How much of that realm every day we in touch with, we connect, that we say, yes, that's the 99%. The 1% feels for us much more than 1%. Sometimes the 1% feels like 99%. And the 99% feels like, yes, there is some spiritual realm. Once in a while, I'm thinking about it, I'm connecting to it. Each one of us has the ability to access the energy of the Kabbalists and to act like them and to perform miracles like them. But the problem is, when we do the spiritual work, it's only in a very limited level. It means that every righteous, elevated soul that perform miracles in this world, the reason they perform miracles because they understand that every action that they do, first of all, it's affecting change in the metaphysical world, in the upper world. And then it manifests itself physically as well in the physical world. Now, what does it mean for us practically? Moses prayed for his sister, Miriam. She had leprosy. This is the verse that it's written, I, I will say, you know, Kel na refa na la. Please God, please cure her. It's 11 letters, the entire verse. We have these two words which are the same. Na refer to a prayer, please help. Refa means healing. Moses knew an important reality that all of us need to understand. That every time a person in our life needs help, or we need help. We're going through a physical problem, we're going through a financial issue, just major challenge in our life, in any level. We're feeling lack, we're feeling void. But the void that we feel indicating there is a void in a metaphysical level. There is a level called the Shechina, unseen collective soul. That unseen collective soul is in exile. What it means is in exile, collectively, we're far away from the light. Whenever each one of us undergoing some challenge, some difficulty, some pain, some lack, some void, it's indication that there is a lack in the upper worlds. Upper worlds means in the collective soul. Upper worlds means in a metaphysical level which affect the entire world. Maybe I feel that pain here, that void here, but the fact that I feel it, it means 
collectively the whole world feel it in some level and it's opportunity for me to affect change for the whole world. Moses didn't pray for his sister. The reason there's two times the word na, because the first na refer kel na, please create a cure in the metaphysical world, in the collective soul. The fact that my sister undergo leprosy, or the fact that my sister, let's say, spoke evil tongue, or that negativity is not just about hair. There is lack, there is blockage, there is negativity in the collective shekhinah, in the collective soul that need to be transformed. That's what I need to pray for. And then I'll also take care of my sister, on the individual. Whenever we going undergoing certain issues and problems in our life, we need to understand it's not just about please the light, help me to fix that issue. It's not about my own small world. It means collectively, collectively means in the metaphysical realm, when the old soul connected, there's an issue, there's a blockage. And the reason it's in my attention that somebody going to a problem that I try to help, or I'm going to a problem that I'm trying to fix, it's indicating I have responsibility to affect change in a bigger level, in a metaphysical level and then as well affecting change here. The secret to create miracles is the first to go to the source. The source is in the Shekhinah level. The source is filling the collective soul, the entire world, to connect to the internal of everything. Instead of, instead of seeing my life, let's say you need a miracle in your life. If I'm able to connect to the internal, Everything is possible, because in that internal level, the light is there, the force of goodness is there, nothing is lacking, nothing is missing, everything is infinitely good. The only reason it's not good, because I see the clothing. I'm reacting to the clothing. I believe in the clothing. That's the problem. Because we believe the 1% reality so much, things look like and feel like, we're giving it so much power, that external reality. The power of the Zohar, the power of Kabbalah, the power of the purpose of our life is to break through that shell. Not to believe it so much, but it's work. It's not just simple mind of a matter. First thing, asking why, with the right intention. The first tool is asking why. Everything that I'm experiencing, that it's not pleasant in my life, I need right away, after I'm of course letting go of the, re and making an effort not to be reactive, <coughs> to ask, why did the light present it to me? When I'm saying why, not just why, some people ask me, why did it happen? I don't see the reason. Why with the knowing, there's a good purpose, there's a good reason. The light wants to help me to grow, to change, to learn a lesson, to improve, to go to the next level, to reflect on something I've done yesterday. Why not just open why? So every time I'm asking why, what I'm actually doing, I'm not ruled by the external shell. Every time. I worked on a project, I thought everything is amazing, then there's major rejection. Why did it happen? What does the Creator try to help me to achieve? Him? It's not maybe, for sure the Creator tried to help me. By me asking why, I'm actually breaking the external shell. By me asking why as a victim, I'll get nowhere. I'm just strengthening the shell. Every time I'm complaining, complaining in a non-productive way, doesn't get me anywhere. What, is that? what am I strengthening? When I'm complaining, I'm strengthening my shell and I'm strengthening the shell of the situation, by the way. That's what I'm doing. Complaining, strengthening the external shell of the situation, which will make things worse for me. It's very simple. It says about the manna that came from the heaven, it was beautiful food. And actually those who trusted the manna was waiting for them right there by the entrance to their tent 
I walk up, who's waiting, and he had that marvelous taste, whatever they wanted to taste. Those who complain what type of a food, I prefer the watermelon and the fish that we had in Egypt. The complainers, number one, needed to search for the manna for miles there to walk, and when they found it, it tasted horribly. Because my complaining, I'm giving power to the shell. And suddenly the manna is not food from heaven. With my complaining, it became horrible taste. I created a shell to the manna. The manna is still a pure energy and food from above. But I created, a po I poisoned it with my complaining. Every time I'm catching myself complaining, I'm actually creating a shell. Inside and in the issue itself. Something did happen, you were at work, or the person annoyed you again, and you complain about it. We are human. We might be irritated, but how fast am I letting go of that irritation? And want to connect to the inner, to realize it happened to me for the sake of helping me. And I cannot give up. At the moment I'm complaining, that's all I create, a shell. And I'll give power to that shell. And it will be more annoying. And it will become a reality. And when I'm already complaining verbally, it's almost impossible to stop for that person or that thing will stop being negative towards me. Because I created it already. I created the shell. I judged based on, based on the clothing. I didn't just judge in my consciousness. I put it out in words. I created the bad taste to the money. I cannot change it now. Maybe in the next opportunity, I'll have opportunity to correct it. Yes, I will. I don't call it complaining. It's not about complaining. Complaining is usually reactive. It, a complaining, if you want to fix something and many things need to fix, and your goal is to bring it towards revealing more light, to elevate, so your attitude, it will not feel as a complaining. It will feel as I'm here to do something, what can I do? Com it doesn't have to be criticism. Yeah, I'm here to do something, what can I do? In whatever way, or constructive criticism. But it's not about complain, because complain is a personal irritation. I'm irritated personally. When I'm irritated personally, 99% of the time is not because of a spiritual desire to elevate. 99% of the time. And even though some of the things are really not okay, but the attitude of complaining He's actually complaining about the Creator, complaining about life. It's not about people even. It's about, I'm expecting certain things to be this way and they are not. And we need to understand one thing. We are not meant that the external reality will please us. Life was not meant that way. Life was meant to have external and internal and to find different tools to break through the external shell and to reveal the light. To challenges, to study, study Kabbalah, study Zohar, study Ten Luminous Emanation, give us the power without suffering to break external shells of our soul, of situations, of pain, and reveal the light within. The study itself, the tools of Kabbalah, that's what they're doing for us. But only if that's our intention. Only if we put it into practice during the course of the day. What is the opposite of complaining? Humility. Humility. When it says in this parasha, Va'ish Moshe Anav Me'od. You know, it's lacking. Not get to the, the, the word Anav. Anav, that's how he's supposed to write Anav. Four letters. And for some reason in the Torah, this letter is missing, the Yud. And Rav Brandwein shared with the Rav that since Moses was the channel to write it, and when he realized he needed to write it about himself, that's what the Midrash is saying, 
So he actually was shaking, he couldn't write it, he was willing to die, not to lie, I'm the most humble person on earth, okay? But he forced actually, so he missed that youth, that letter. It was lacking, it was missing. So actually within the word anav, which means humble, there is no yud, which is part of the word, because Moshe couldn't find himself writing it about himself, even though as a child. So the idea is, the idea is that complaining and humility is the two opposite sides of the coin. Complaining is one, it's, it's having the consciousness, I want reality, external reality, and I'm expecting the external reality to be my way. Humility is, I'm expecting nothing. I'll connect to the light of the Creator either way. I'm expecting nothing to be my way. If you're in a room with people that you respect, and they're making fun of us, let's say we're sitting in a room with people that we respect, and they're making fun of us. And what's the test of humility? If I'm bothered very much, which we're all human with the ego, it means I'm not in that level of Moses. Moses reached a level of humility that actually didn't bother him at all because he was in a level he doesn't expect the external reality to present itself in a way he loves it. I want the package to come that way. He say, even though they're destroying my ego, that's the words, the inner. And that's my job to connect to the inner. It's a total blessing. But what is ego? Entitlement and expectation for things to come my way. The package, the shell to come my way. Humility have no expectation. Have no expectation and entitlement and the feeling that I'm deserving. And if it doesn't come in a package I like it, I'm upset and irritated. Humility, if it doesn't come in a package I like it, wow, I want to connect to the internal, to learn the new lessons that I need to learn here. That's humility. What if it does come? So if a person is humble, he doesn't get to his head. He doesn't say, wow, I am amazing. happy, appreciative for the Creator, and hopefully using that energy to do more good, and not starting to write in your own hand a movie about yourself, you know, that's, there's levels, yeah, doesn't mean, as I said, the external world doesn't appear always as bad, it's good and bad, good and bad, that's how it appears, so to connect to the internal is to ask why, why does it happen to me?